Hey cobblers, welcome back to the bush. Actually, my front yard again today in isolation. In this video, we're going to do a snorkel install, but not only that, we'll be sorting out once and for all whether a forward facing or rearward facing snorkel is best for airflow and performance. So, let's get into it. Okay, so this is the airbox lid for the engine in the Zook, and it's a 3.2 litre V6 naturally aspirated petrol, so no turbocharger. And we'll take the airbox lid off. So this is the clean side. This is where the clean air goes in. You shouldn't be able to find any dust there. There's a bit of oil on my pink finger, but other than that's all good. We'll take out the air filter. And this is the dirty side. And as you can see, <laughs> she's pretty dirty. There's actually a little bit of sand in there from probably Robe or Portland. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom half of the air box, the dirty side of the air box. I'm going to put a little barb in there so I can run a manometer or a manometer. And this manometer is like a very sensitive pressure gauge. It measures in inches of water. So I think it's about 27 inches of water is one PSI. So it's very, very sensitive. And after that, we'll be doing power runs from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. And we'll check with a standard forward facing snorkel head or rearward facing snorkel head is the most efficient. So let's get into that. All right, so we'll drill a small hole in here. I think I found a, an appropriate spot and I'll screw them in from the outside. Afterwards, I'll just put a bit of silicon on it to shut it up. Now with the barb installed, all we need to do is put a bit of hose on to the end of that. And of course, I managed to drill two holes in because I wasn't watching what I was doing properly. So I've plugged up the other one. We we'll run that into the cab, connect it to our manometer, and uh, we'll go and do a bit of performance testing. We'll get a baseline. Okay, so here we have a couple of gauges. Now, this is an OBD2 reader known as the Ultra Gauges. Very similar to the scan gauge, so we've got kilometres an hour there, RPM, engine temp, intake temp. Now, that's interesting. We're sitting at 54 degrees, and the outside thermometer is telling me it's 20 degrees there. And we have our manometer reading here, and that's reading in inches of water. Okay, so now we're going to do a zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Nothing special, not stalling out the torque converter or anything like that, not manually changing gears. So here we go, we'll just flatten the floor. And we got a 12.56 for the zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Beauty. All right, so we'll take it back and I'll review the footage and we'll have a look at what the maximum vacuum was as well. Now guys, if you don't want to watch the whole installation procedure, by all means, head to that timestamp and we'll get right into the results. So the next step with this vehicle is to take off the wheel and access the plastic in the inner guard and remove that as well. That's particular to this vehicle. So I've done a 70 series and you access it all through holes in the engine bay. But this one, we've got to take off that plastic guard. So let's take it off. Take the wheel off first, of course. Yep. What did I do before an impact, eh? <laughs> I love this thing. Rightio. So we'll just grab a screwdriver now and we'll take out the inner guard there. And of course, and spare tire goes underneath because you never trust a jack or a jack stand really and undo these clips all you do is get a screwdriver in behind them and give them a bit of a twist not like that though I just break that one <laughs> oh, there's one i have to replace we'll try it on this one hopefully this one doesn't break There we go, and that's how it's supposed to work. Now we've pulled the last clip out. Should be able to pull this inner guard out. Beauty. 
fitting. Now we've got the inner guard out, we can take the air cleaner box out. I think I'm going to have to get a taller tripod. So this is the air box lid. And I say it's three 10 mils, and it should drop out. <laughs> Let's see how that works out for us. Oh! Air box is out. There's plenty of sand from Robe and Beachport and Portland. Yeah, that might be getting a tub. All right, let's have a look at what we're up to next. Okay, so on this particular vehicle, we need to get rid of this badge. So we've got the old trusty hairdryer, we'll heat it up, and we'll take it off the trusty Costco card. Oh, she's warm. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a nice caring ornament, and I'll get a bit of eucalyptus oil or something, and uh, I'll get rid of the sponge on the bottom of the panel there. And on to the next bit. We also have to pull out the old intake as well. That's the top half of it, and there's a bottle down the bottom here called the boom bottle, and uh, that's got to go as well. So we'll see how that one's secured in and rip him out. And here's the boom bottle. It only took one screw out and a little bit of uh, edge bother on this one to come out. And this is just to stop intake resonance. So uh, louder the intake noise and more thrilling the drive, I say. So that's going too. Okay, the next part is imperative to get right. Now, firstly, make sure you've got the right template and reference this number with your parts list to make sure they've supplied you with the right template. I've already done that. Now, you need to check where the alignment is. You've noticed I've already put a couple of bits of masking tape there. Now, the alignment is along the edge of the bonnet here. And, oh, masking tape's working well. Along here as well. Once you've done that, stick down your masking tape. There's some quality masking tape there. Right here, is that done? Grab your felt tip marker in a contrasting colour, and of course I have to use white on this car because it's a dark grey car. And mark out all your dots. And take your time with this, make sure it's 100% aligned because, well, basically you only get one crack at it and if you stuff it up, you're off for a new panel, unless you can hide it. But uh, yes, take your time, make sure it's 100% correct. All right, with that done, we can take the template off and we can start drilling. Beautiful. Before we start drilling, though, I always like to center punch holes. It just stops the drill from wandering. And try and make it as concentric as possible. There is a little bit of fudge, but not too much. Beautiful. Next two we want to drill out is these two, and that's 98 millimeters of this one, and just short of four inches. You want to make sure you start it in the right hole. Oh yeah, that's the first one. A little bit nerve-wracking these ones. And that's the insert. So now we'll do the other one. You'll see there's a bit of overlap there, so that's good. There's something for the uh, pilot drill to grab purchase on. Beautiful. Okay, so now all I have to do is do up those edges here, flatten them out, which I'll do in a minute. But firstly, I'm going to increase the size of these holes to M16 with a step drill. We'll show you how to do that. So first up, we'll increase the size of the holes up to M10. As you can see, large drill bits on thin sheet metal don't work too well, and that's where a step drill comes in handy. Drill just by design, and this one goes up to from 10 mil to 30 mil. I think it is. Yep, 30 mil, and they work really well on thin sheet metal. And you'll notice I'll put a bit of black tape there, to I, so I know where to stop.
Okay, now I'll just get in and deburr the back of those with a deburring tool. Okay, so this is a deburring tool. These are, these are like little godsends, they really are. So they'll do the outside diameter. And if you angle them back, they can also do a decent job on the other side from the front side, as long as the hole's not too deep. Preferably you get to the back side, of course, but if you can't get to the back side, that does a pretty good job of it. The burring tool, highly recommended. Not this particular brand, any particular brand will do. And usually they have replaceable tips, and there's usually one in the handle. It looks like I need a new tip. <laughs> it's a backup. Anyway, so I'll deburr all of these. Right now, now the bearing's done, we have to level these out. So I'll mark them up first. Then I'll grab the body saw and I'll fix them up. Always good to have a bit of a guide. Well, looks like the body saw's battery's flat, so we have to have at it with the angle grinder very carefully. Okay, with that now done, I'll just uh, sand it all up and uh, start painting it up for a bit of corrosion protection. Beautiful. Now for the painting. Don't have any paint handy. Just spray it into the lid. And then get your paintbrush. And then just tap it on the edge. And don't forget the holes. Right, so now we're actually starting to make progress. We'll grab a snorkel and start them off by hand. We're about halfway through its adjustment. Just nip it up. We'll have to take it off again later. Now there'll be some stainless steel studs. And grab some Loctite 243 is what's recommended. So just a multi-purpose Loctite. Just put a little dab on. I need to fill up all the threads. Just on one side. That's more than enough. And you just run them in. Just finger tight. You don't have to double nut it and put, put it down to a 100 foot pound or anything like that silly. Right here, with that done, it's exciting times now. We can actually mock it up onto the car, so let's go and do that. Okay, so I'll put a bit of tape to protect the A pillar there. We'll just pop the snorkel, line them up. Hopefully, they'll line up. Yep, they do. <laughs> yeah, you're sort of going to get in behind here and mark the top and bottom, which won't be easy. So, I get about halfway through. The yeah, movement in there, the allowable play. So you can line it up as best you can. And mark the top and bottom. Yeah, you won't be able to see that really well on the video, or probably at all actually. <laughs> That's all right. We'll have a decent look in a second. Well, I'll pull it off. Okay. 
Okay, now I've just got to remove that mounting bracket and transfer the marks here onto here and those three holes so I can drill. Right, now I've got the bracket off and it kind of sits like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark up again on my tape. Mark the three holes. Geez, I'm glad I'm not a surgeon. Okay, now we've all heard the saying, measure twice, cut once. And it's really important here because we're going into the A-pillar. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to mount this back onto the body of the snorkel and I'm gonna check my alignment because I don't wanna do this twice. And the A-pillar isn't an easily replaceable panel. Okay, so put the body of the snorkel back on. Goes in there somewhere, there we go. And we'll check our alignment. Yep. So I've measured twice, and now I'm ready to cut once. Okay, so first up we'll center punch them. Now there's a decent likelihood there's actually stuff in behind there, so you're gonna to have to be very careful when you're drilling it. And I'll start with a small pilot drill three mil. And the final diameter of these particular ones is eight mil, so I'll work my way up in probably two stages. Oh yeah, just needed to burr them now. Give you some plastic inserts, which just push in. Now, they receive the stainless steel screws. So all you do is grab your bracket, turn him up the right way, <laughs> and start your screws. Beautiful, job done. Now we need to join some of the internal plumbing to the snorkel body itself. And we need to make sure it's a decent seal. So we've got a bit of 243. We're gonna run that around the edge. Nice, decent, thick bead, but not too thick. Otherwise you'll get, get it on the inside as well. Now I don't know where the nozzle for this one's gone. So <laughs> just use the finger. But remember, we're relying on this intersection to be watertight, so be a little bit generous. This stuff sticks to absolutely everything, including me. Right, yeah, so then grab the first part. Okay, now we've got all five of those put together. We'll align it on here. Hopefully poke all of them through. <laughs> and then you get the pot river gun onto him. Then work your way around with your pot river gun. Now it's one. That's it, all five are done now. So, let's get further on with the installation. And I'll just get rid of that excess sealant. The body into it, so we'll just feed that through the hole. As best we can. Line up the studs at the bottom here. Again, as best we can. Almost looks like a bought one. Now, 
We need to line up these fellas. Beautiful, top half secured. Now I just need to go in behind and secure all the bottom. And the way I'm going to do that is with these large mud guard washers and the nylock nuts. So I'll get on the reverse side underneath and I'll secure it up. But I'll save you from watching me do that. It's all over by the shouting now. Uh, that pipe's been put in underneath there and it's been all secured. But this isn't primarily about the installation, this is about the testing. And you can see in the bottom of here, there's a bit of a hole. <laughs> And uh, there's supposed to be a valve on that actually, and this one, well, the valve's not there. So that's pretty common amongst air boxes for a drain, but since we've now put in a watertight seal from right up past the height of the windscreen, almost down and including down to the air box, I'll fill that up with silicon and then we'll pop him in. Okay, so this is the janky solution I've come up with to testing the rearward facing snorkel. It's a 75 mil. 90 degree bend, but it's pointing in the right direction. I'd actually prefer it to be a little bit closer to the windscreen here. That's a lower pressure area. So we're actually doing a favor to the snorkel by having it a little bit away from the windscreen. So let's get on with the testing. Okay, so we're back out testing again. Now you can see we've got our OBD2 reader here and our manometer here. One thing interesting to note was our intake temperature here. It was in excess of 40 degrees. Now it was slightly slower ambient here, about 15 degrees Celsius, but we're only up 10 degrees, not in excess of 20 degrees like we were with a standard intake setup. So that's a great thing when we're dropping intake air temperature. That means denser air means more horsepower at the wheels. Rightio, so let's do our performance testing. Okay, just as before, nothing fancy, just gonna flatten the foot and see how we go. So we've got a 12.21, that's actually less. Okay, with the back and facing snorkel, that's less time than our standard setup, which is great. So we'll pull over and we'll head back and have another crack. Now, seeing with the manometer, having a quick glance down, even though I was concentrating on the road, it seemed to be in excess of 30 inches. <laughs> that's not great. Okay, let's turn around, put the actual snorkel head on and give it another crack. Okay, so we've zeroed the manometer and we're ready to go again, this time with the ram head. Point eight three, so we're we've gained performance without a shadow of a doubt. But I wasn't having a good look at the manometer, so let's head back, analyze the footage, and check it out. So onto the results. Now this is the zero to one hundred kilometer an hour acceleration times standard twelve point five six seconds. With the backward facing snorkel, is actually a little bit faster than now. It was slightly cooler, so that could be attributing to the times. Cooler air is denser air, so you get more power. 12.21 seconds for the backward facing snorkel. But when we put the ram head on, 11.83. So that's a 3.1% improvement or 0.38 of a second, almost half a second there. We gained just by putting the snorkel on the right way. And when we look at the pressures, Standard, well that was actually the most efficient and you'd expect that because that was the shortest route We don't have a long extension heading up to almost the top of the windscreen So that maxed out at 11 inches of water. So obviously less is better The backward facing snorkel was easily the worst by far at 31.82 it maxed out at and we got a 39.2% improvement of efficiency Going with a ram head. It's certainly looking the ram heads favor at this point, doesn't it? 
Now on to the 60 to 100 km hour acceleration times. Standard 6.88 seconds. With the backward snorkel, again we were faster but we were slightly cooler, so that's to be expected, at 6.72 seconds. But with the ram head, we dropped 0.24 of a second or 3.6% improvement down to 6.48 seconds. So again, just changing the ram head, we're faster, we're making more power. Now for the pressure in the 60 to 100 kilometers an hour, standard was 9.86 inches, and that's almost to be expected again because it's the shortest route. With a backward facing snorkel, shot up to 31.82 inches. Wow, okay, so the ram head improved it by 46.2% down to 17.14 inches, and that's just for changing from a backward facing snorkel head to a forward facing proper ram head. I know which one I'm certainly going for from now on in. I've also heard the argument about turbocharged engines and they say ram heads don't benefit turbocharged engines because turbocharged engines suck all the air in it. That's just not the case. We'll throw up a turbocharger compressor map and if you have a look there on the x-axis, it actually talks about pressure ratio. It doesn't say 20 psi or 12 psi, it's a pressure ratio. So the higher the input pressure, the higher the output pressure. If you've got one additional psi of input pressure and you've got a pressure ratio of let's say three to one, you'll actually get an additional three psi of output pressure. So you're actually getting a compound benefit. So it's actually more important with a turbocharged engine to be running a ram head than with a naturally aspirated engine. You'll benefit more. So guys, the evidence is overwhelming. Ram head versus backward facing snorkel head, it's not even argument anymore. Not only do they, well, I know beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but I think they look goofy. They just don't work properly. Go for a proper ram head snorkel. There's a reason for anyone who has a R&D budget sells these things as opposed to the backwards facing snorkels. Now guys, if you like this video, give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down twice. Thanks guys. We'll see you on the next one. Busting miss. So now we're going to do the testing for the standard setup. Now this is an ultra gauge, it's an OBD2 reader, so it's a bit like a scan gauge, but it uh, does a couple of other things, it's got alarms and whatnot, and, and this is a manometer. Do, 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 do. Manometer. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, no one who doesn't like the Muppets is going to get that one. Try that again.